So, Akshay, do you have a favorite data science joke? No. How did you get started in data science? I went to UC San Diego, studied neuroscience, and for the first two years of college, um, I had a really intense interest in finance. So was doing internships in private equity, investment banking, and the like, and saw an opportunity there actually to speed up my workload with scripting, right? And so started learning, dabbling my toes in Python, and uh, come my junior year, decided to full on make the switch into data science. Uh, got a data science internship at PG&E, the Northern California Utility. Uh, worked on some really interesting projects there. And after that, came back to school and did some software engineering internships at Learning Equality, an ed tech startup down in San Diego. Uh, and kind of realized that a good blend of all this would be product management. Somebody who'd done finance, somebody who'd do data science, and who actually had switched my degree to design. Blending the three, I applied to branch as a product manager. Uh, joined and within a month I realized there's such a need for data science here and actually transitioned to data science there. What does Branch do? Branch is a unicorn mobile startup, I'll give you all the buzzwords, but it's a unicorn mobile startup focused on mobile linking, mobile attribution, and mobile search. So to break each of the three down, as mobile linking is if you've ever engaged with the Airbnb email where on your phone where you see here's homes near me in San Francisco. If I were to click on that and be routed directly in the app, that's Branch in the back end. So for all these top 20,000, 30,000 apps, Branch is powering the underlying linking infrastructure for that. And so with that, mobile marketers who are deploying these campaigns, those email campaigns I just mentioned, or some sort of ads that you see on Facebook, behind those, all the marketers can get a unified sense of how their campaigns are performing across all channels and platforms with Branch. And so we give them a dashboard that allows them to do this. And the third aspect, mobile search, Throughout this entire process of building a linking infrastructure, Branch has been able to index in-app content, which means same way that Google is able to do page rank across the real web. Uh, Branch is able to kind of gain a sense of popularity of in-app content and distribute that for sort of a spotlight search for Android. And that's kind of the, the current product offering that we're leaning in towards. What is a typical workday like? My typical workday can vary from one of three things. Can either be me focused on data pipelines and making sure that I have the underlying infrastructure I need in order to get the analytics that I want. Uh, the other, the second thing that I could be doing is scripting, say writing something in Python, be it Pandas, PySpark, something like that, with a general goal in mind is let me go ahead and answer this business question or build out some sort of notebook where I can share with my team and they can answer these questions. Or the third thing is dashboarding and reporting, be that in Looker or Tableau, building a data model in Looker or dashboarding itself in Tableau. That's kind of where I find myself find, blurring those three lines with uh, interaction with business teams and coworkers all mixed in those. What's your favorite and least favorite thing to do as a data scientist? Okay, <laughs> uh, let's start with the bad news first. So least favorite is gonna be writing the pipelines. As I mentioned, I think that's my least favorite part of my day to day where it's Sometimes I wish the analytics infrastructure was available for me rather than me having to do that. Though I am a firm believer that all data scientists should also be able to write their own ETL because it gives you a more respect for where your data comes from and understanding of data quality. But my favorite thing is probably sharing insights with people on the business teams and people kind of on the product teams. There's such an opportunity that you'll realize when you become a data scientist to be able to show value from your own company's data to your non-technical teams. And I think for them, being able to ponder and strategize on the data that you've provided and come out with that actionable insight is just a great feeling knowing that you were involved altogether. What's one essential tool that you can't live without? From a data science perspective, Pandas. Hands down, I think um, when I'm working with smaller data sets, I honestly sometimes forego Excel and just use Pandas. Uh, that has become my go-to, but with Branch, often we're working with larger data volumes, so I have to end up using the PySpark uh, API, like load up a Spark cluster and then spin up a PySpark notebook. That tends to be my normal workflow. Although when I get the chance to use Pandas, I think having one unified API for data loading, manipulation, and visualization is like all with one line functions is just great. What kinds of people typically become data scientists and what advice do you have for them? I think there's four types if I had to break it down. One is somebody with a software engineering background or some sort of engineering background in general. It could be mechanical or something else. But 
people who come in with that mindset and then realize that there's opportunity to work with larger data and have that be your core day-to-day -day focus. I think the second type is somebody with an analytics background, um, somebody who worked at data analyst or business analyst and just really, that's where I slant towards. But the third type is somebody with a research background, somebody who comes in with a PhD, a master's degree in specialization. And I think the, the broader fourth type is somebody who just becomes a data scientist out of company necessity, is somebody who is just uh, generally helping out with all things related to the business, realizes that they need to analyze data that can't fit into Excel, they don't have a visualization tool or a BI tool like Tableau where they can load data into, and they start Googling and just go down that rabbit hole. And I think those are the four. But general advice I think applies to everyone um, would be really focus on learning programming for practical business applications. I think down the line, three, four years from now, a lot of these some core data science functions will be commoditized and uh, become available in a product. So I think it's really good to understand how to share insight with other people and how to derive insights from uh, quick scripts and programs. And that way you can actually add business value. That's the most important thing as a data scientist. What types of things do hiring managers look for when hiring data scientists at Branch? I think hiring data scientists across the industry is generally a pretty vague and uh, nascent area right but what we've realized here at branch is that we have a need for kind of a full stack data scientist obviously every company looks for this but like what you want is somebody who has good analyst skills can look into data dive deep into patterns and can share insights with the business you also want someone who can write their own etl right and just knows python and sql and functional programming in general and lastly you want someone who has the ability to add a surface scratch some research area. For certain data science roles we have, we want pure, say, NLP focused people for our search team. Um, but across the business, we want people who slant more towards having a good sense of engineering and analytics capabilities. What's some tactical advice you have for someone who's looking to break into data science? Definitely. There's kind of two major pathways I see. One is self-learning, which is YouTube. YouTube is the greatest resource I have found for anything data science related. There's channels that will summarize papers, research papers in two minutes. There's channels that will focus on data science content and how to become one like Springboard. So there's a lot you can learn about the industry and the roles there. Um, but also when it comes down to learning how to solve practical business problems with programming languages, which is the core job of a data scientist, I think using Kaggle, right, or kind of building your own portfolio, working with dummy data sets and publishing that on the web is the best way to get your own name out there and show that I am not somebody who just learns things from research perspective. I'm somebody who applies them practically. I'm somebody who's solved these problems and I'm putting them available on GitHub and public web for people to audit my work. That's great. And I think the second option is kind of signing up for a bootcamp, right? Is if you really are in a place in your life where you're not having access to the opportunities you think you want. A bootcamp, and what I've seen from branches, we hire a bunch of people from bootcamps from a software development perspective too, is that it's a great place to restart and you get to fully learn the curriculum in and out. The people there are experts, right? I think that is a great place to reskill and just get a start in data science if you don't know where to start. Do you recommend any data scientist uh, that you follow on Twitter or any of the social media channels? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So for anyone interested in data science, highly recommend Twitter. I think Twitter is a great place to find out more about what's happening in the industry at a quicker pace. Uh, two of my favorites are Vicky Boykis. Uh, she writes a Substack blog called Normcore Tech, which is really focused on kind of data science and what's state of happening with like market maps and kind of things about Here's practical advice on how to work with these different data types. Uh, Randy Al is somebody who I follow on Twitter as well. He's recently on paternity leave from what I read, and he's writing a bunch of good content on things like here is how all the different date times work. Here's ISO 8601. Here's what UTC is. And he explains all the messy nitty gritty and puts it all into one clear, concise blog post. So those are two I recommend.